Today on BRS TV, we have our ninth episode of the Neptune Apex series, and we're going to show you how to calibrate your salinity probe. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week, we're going to calibrate our conductivity probe, often referred to as a salinity probe. There's some pretty important differences between this probe and others. First is it's super fragile, so don't go whacking it on anything during the calibration procedure or you'll regret it. Second is it has some tiny holes on the side of the probe. These are to let the air out that can get captured within the probe. It's really important that you place a probe in a location that's unlikely to produce a lot of bubbles, like right next to the skimmer output. These tiny bubbles can collect inside the probe tipping and result in inaccurate readings. Find the right place for the probe is critical because even the tiniest of bubbles collect here and will mess with the reading. The cord is also more susceptible to interference issues than most probes, so try to keep it away from power cords, especially ballast cords. If you're having issues, disconnect the cord and try to route the probe in a way that reduces noise from other equipment. The first thing you need to decide is if you want to connect a second temp probe to the PM2. Connecting a temp probe directly to the PM2 will result in more accurate measurements, but isn't absolutely critical. The only difference from a calibration perspective is if you don't use a second temp probe, you can leave the temperature compensation during setup at zero. I personally feel if it's worth measuring salinity in the first place, it's worth trying to get it as accurate as possible, especially because I dose two part in a lot of tanks, which will raise salinity over time. Because I am using the temperature probe connected to the PM2, it's important that we change the temperature compensation to 2.2. It's also possible to just disconnect the temp probe from the apex and move it up to the PM2. If you do this, you'll have to make sure all of your temp controlled outlets are running off the correct probe. Swap out all the tiles on the display module and fusion dashboard. Many people might just find it's easier to run two temp probes. The next thing we want to set is a range. Low is typically used to test the purity of fresh RODI water, medium for freshwater tanks, high reads in conductivity for a saltwater tank, and salinity reads in parts per thousand, which most people are more familiar with than what I suggest. The first step to calibrating your salinity probe is to take it out of the tank, dry it off, blow the water out of the end, and let it dry. I suggest letting it sit there for a couple hours to get completely dry. It's critical that there's no moisture present between the contacts within the probe. If you haven't put it in the tank yet, it's already dry, and you can obviously skip the drying step. Once it's dry, hit the conductivity calibration button and it should say dry conductivity probe and settling with a number. Once the number stops moving for 10 to 20 seconds, go ahead and hit OK. During this time, you should float the calibration solution in the tank or sump in the same area as your temp probe so the next step of calibration is accurate. Now select the solution that you're going to be calibrating with. A vast majority of saltwater aquarium owners will use a 53,000 solution, which is 35 parts per thousand or approximately 1.026 specific gravity. Select that. Now clip the corner off of your solution and insert your probe all the way at an angle so that the probe tip stays fully submerged. Then insert the conductivity calibration solution with the probe into the same area as your temp probe, which is critical. You also want to make sure that none of the tank water gets into the calibration solution packet. Try and make sure that the air holes on the probe is turned upwards. Give it a few light taps with your finger to get the air out, and then wait for the settling number to stop changing. Remember, this probe is fragile, so don't whack it against the sump to get the air out. Don't be concerned with what the settling number says, only that it stops moving for 10 to 20 seconds. Try tapping again to see if there's any more air in the probe. If it doesn't change, hit OK and the probe should be calibrated. Confirm this by leaving it in the solution and checking your home page to see if it reads very close to 35 parts per thousand. Remember, if you do have any issues with this process, the first step is to isolate the probe cord and remove the other electrical noise. Throw the temp and solidity probe into the same cup and remove stray voltage issues as well. See if the readings look reasonable now. If you have any questions about this process or tips for your fellow reefers, check out the comments area down below. If this is your first time with us, hit that subscribe button because we do this every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.